What does it take to be a working actor? Our guest today is an Australian actress whose career is beginning to fly. Featuring in Joel Edgerton's film, Felony, an edgy role on Australian TV show, Neighbours, this actress is shining. Stay tuned as not only are there oodles of actors tips, we find out how you can use fruit to score a role. Happy Sunday, peeps. You're watching The Actors Process. I am your host and acting junkie, Claire Elizabeth D. And today we're shooting in Melbourne and I'm sharing a drink with not only the extremely talented actress, but dancer, singer, DJ, and lifetime friend, Sarah Roberts. <laughs> hey, Sarah, how are you? I'm good, thank you. That's a great wrap. Thank you. <laughs> you're very welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. No, you're welcome. On the actor's process. So we go way back. Yeah. So we met, I think, when I was about 15, and you were about 13. Oh, my God, it's so weird. And I don't even think our viewers know this, but I was a bit of an entrepreneur when I was younger, and I opened up my own dance school when yes, I was very yes, young. Yes, yes. And you and your sister were two of my very first guinea pigs. <laughs> but we also know each other through growing up in the dance industry, singing, musical theatre, bit of promo, promo. Yeah, Alice, I'll speak of that. <laughs> But in the last few years, we've really been investing in our acting careers and it's just been so delightful to watch your career over the last few years. Oh, thank you. And you too with all this stuff as well. Oh, thank yeah. you. And so what inspired you to get into the performing industry? Performing in general? Yeah. Um, my mum started me off in dancing when I was about four, three or four, I think. And then um, I used to watch Natalie Imbruglia on Neighbours <laughs> and I wanted to be her. So mum started me at the National Theatre Drama mm -hmm. School and then I started singing lessons as well. Um, and it all just kind of escalated from there. I don't know where it came from. I mean, my mum's creative, but um, no one in my family's really got a creative job out of my parents. So I don't know where that came from, but I always have loved performing. So. I guess that's what, what happened. Yes, yeah, so what led you to wanting to be doing on-screen acting? I always wanted to do it when I was younger, when I was dancing, um, but I had this fear that people would think that I thought that I was amazing. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, we all don't want to look like that we want to be mm. in the spotlight yeah, yeah, and yeah. that we want to put ourselves out there to be seen and heard and judged. Yeah. 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 So um, I think probably only in the past maybe five years, I really said, well, look, if I'm going to give it a shot, now's going to be the time. And um, yeah, I started getting almost a little bit, uh, I wasn't as passionate about dancing as I had been when I was younger. So I thought now was a perfect time. Yeah. And so it was about, I think about six months ago and I'm on Facey and I'm strolling down my home page and there you are looking absolutely glamorous with Melissa George <laughs> and Joel Edgerton. I'm like, what the? <laughs> and that's when I found out that you had shot this amazing film, <laughs> Felony. How did that come about? Um, well, I auditioned for Felony. I remember getting the audition like the night before I had to audition. The sides came through. Oh, wow. So you only had one night to I prepare. I only had one night to prepare. Yeah. Wow. And um, the character I play, I play a, a mother. Um, which you're not. Yeah, which I'm not. <laughs> it's a little substitution needed. So I remember getting it and going, oh, my God, how am I going to do it? Um, so I auditioned the next day and then I think it was two weeks. So I kind of forgotten about it. It was two weeks. And then That's I got always a... best, isn't it? When you actually just forget that you've auditioned and then yeah. you get the phone call. Yeah. And I kind of, the character was sort of so removed from me at the time that I kind of thought, oh, it's probably a bit of a stretch anyway. Mm. Um, and then I got another call two weeks later saying, hey, so you've got a call back. Um, so I went in and did a callback and it was so quick. I remember doing two scenes. I just did them once each and Greg was like, you nailed it, which is really nice to hear. Had you done a casting with Greg before? I've done so this casting, is Greg apps for yeah, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd done casting workshops before, but I don't think he remembered me from that. But you know he it was, must have. <laughs> oh, I don't know, because you know it was funny. I remember in the casting workshops he 
said that you should take, you know, something um, that could start a conversation into your castings. And yeah. he talked about grapes and taking, you know, grapes in on a hot summer's day because you could just be like, oh, just went down to the supermarket, bought some grapes. Do you want, do you want some? So I took grapes to every single casting. I even took grapes up to, up to Sydney. When I flew up to Sydney, I took grapes as well. <laughs> so then when I ended up landing the role, he, he wrote to me and he said, oh, it must have been the grapes. Or your talent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's a um, fun story, I guess. So was it intimidating knowing that you were going to be on set with all of these really well-known Aussie but internationally known actors? Yeah, it was. And you know what else? I think because Joel wrote the script and it was his baby, I kind of felt, um, well, I put a lot of pressure on myself to do a good job on mm. the film because I knew it was so important to him. Um, so you hadn't met him before? No, no, I met him at the table read. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, he was lovely, so down to earth. And he was really, you know, grateful that I'd come up to Sydney to do the table read. And I was like, well, what do you mean? Are you kidding me? I'm happy here. <laughs> yeah. So what sort of preparation was needed? I mean, if you were a mother, yeah. what preparation did you do for this role? I used a lot of Ivana Chubbuck mm -hmm. stuff. Um, and I also hung out a lot with kids before I shot and found a lot of uh, photographs of children. This sounds a bit creepy, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of photographs of children that I thought could be mine and that I felt, you know, that I thought were cute or, you know. And then I, um, I met my, my son when we were shooting and I tried to hang out, hang out with him as much as I could and, um, you know, got photos of him and, you know, just tried to imagine us together yeah so obviously when you're doing class mm. as an actor you do so much preparation and rehearsal with your scene partner do you get that opportunity when you're on set with such known actors mm. to get to do that sort of preparation no nah, it was hard because I mean I wanted to do all that preparation yeah. I wanted to um you know hang out with my son as much as possible mm. but he had to go to school and yeah. um obviously as well being from Melbourne and we shot in Sydney it was hard because uh, they couldn't obviously fly me up too far in advance before the shoot date just for mm. me to hang out with my son yeah. Um, so yeah it's really hard and that's one of the things I learned from working on that film was that you don't always have those luxuries and mm. um, but you could develop a relationship with a kid in Melbourne or be looking at the yeah. photos and doing yeah, that sort Yeah, totally. Of and we, you know, we became Facebook buddies and I chatted to him on Facebook, you know, when he wasn't doing homework or whatever. So, um, yeah, we developed a relationship that way. And when the film finishes, do you have any other commitments after the shoot date's over? Or do you have to keep your hair the same in case, you know, something doesn't uh, work out and they need to reshoot anything or...? <laughs> Not that I was told, <laughs> but I'll tell, you, I'll tell you a story though. Before, uh, before I shot Felony, I had an audition for another film where I had to have uh, like blonde through my hair. Well, I didn't have to. I can't but imagine you were blonde. <laughs> it was just blonde highlights. Oh. I didn't have to, but I, I really wanted to commit to this audition. Yeah. So I went and put blonde through my hair before they told me that I got felony. And then they told me a couple of days later or something that I had felony, so I had to go back and dye it uh, my natural colour. But the hairdresser dyed it like jet black, like Morticia black. So then I was freaking out, thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to get there, they're gonna, I'm going to shoot and they're going to, you know, angst out about my hair. So I got all these hair remedies. Apparently, if you mix some um, bicarb soda with um, uh, head and shoulders and you really scrub it in there, it's <laughs> This is a really great it. tip for all the women out <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah, <laughs> and you're supposed to wrap it in glad wrap and keep it there for a bit and it's supposed to, you know, subdue the colour, but it didn't really work. <sighs> So you shot Felony and then you also got cast in Wolf Creek too. Yeah. Yeah, so how did that come about? Uh, I really pushed for an audition yeah. with the director and the producer. Um, uh, she was an English backpacker that I played. Um, and so I spoke about Felony quite a lot and asked to have a meeting with them. And uh, you know what, actually, I met with Greg before I shot Felony and asked him for some tips because Felony was my best, first big film. Um, and so I think that sort of helped having a relationship with him. And then I just kept pushing my agent to get me an audition and then got an audition and put it down. I, I put down a scene for an English backpacker and a French backpacker. And then, yeah, they told me that I got the English one. So 
Yeah. So have you actually got an opportunity to check out Wolf Creek too? Yeah, it's just so, come so, out. <laughs> so I did see it a couple of days ago and they've cut the scene. They've cut the scene that I'm in, which is a real shame. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. So even the, um, we, I mean, which makes me feel a bit better that they didn't just cut my role, they cut the whole scene. Um, so I have another close friend, uh, Chloe Borum, who played a French girl and she's also been cut too, which is, you know, upsetting because we put so much work into the film. But yeah, because what sort of preparation did you need to do? Well, um, I mean, Rose, the girl that I played, she was a small role anyway, but I like to commit to roles even mm. if they're tiny. So I went and stayed in a backpackers. Um, and, oh. you know, and also that sort of stuff's fun to, to do. Yeah. I mean, and that's why we want to be an actor, yeah. right? Like, we get to explore all these different parts yeah. of ourselves. Yeah. But, I mean, not every day we're going to play an English back yeah. player and back, backpacker. <laughs> I knew what you meant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I did that and, you know, I spoke in an English accent for two hours a day. Um, Which is going to be handy as an actor yeah. anyway. Yeah. I mean, whether you do another play that you've got to have an English accent. Yeah. Um, you know, and it was all fun. It was all fun and I would have regretted it anyway if I didn't do all that work and mm. the scene was in there. I would have felt terrible. Freeing the Actor is excited to give all of you up and coming De Niro's and Streep's out there the opportunity to apply for the $5,000 Actor Scholarship. This is an amazing opportunity for actors wanting to do more training, make a film or fly to LA. The lucky winner will also have their work shown on the season finale of The Actors' Process. Have your work seen by family, friends and the public eye. For more info, go to www.freeingtheactor.com. So, Sarah, you're currently doing a stint on Neighbours. Yeah. Neighbours. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> What's the difference between fast turnaround TV compared to working on a major feature film? It's a really good question. Um, look, I think the amount of time you have to prep, mm. I think, is uh, that's a huge difference. Uh, like with when I was working on felony, I had months in advance to prep, um, and we also had a day to shoot a scene or half a day to shoot a scene. But with with neighbours, like I shot uh, nine scenes in one day. Wow. I think I started at six a.m. and finished at six p.m. or something, and you just like just churn through just them. Just to keep the energy going. Yeah, and I was exhausted by mm. the, so I went home, slept, got up, and did exactly the same thing the next day. But um, with with films, well, you know, the few films that I've done, I feel like you get longer to prep in between mm. and you can really, like, delve into, into and characters. You and you just wouldn't get the same amount of time to really work on, like, what your substitution is. Yeah. What's driving the scene or do any kind of improvisation, like getting to know your son, yeah, for example. Yeah, totally. So I feel like you've got to be really quick with those things, like know your triggers and... Um, You'd be quick at substituting if you are using substitution and mm. um, yeah, I mean it really helps as well I feel on TV sets or well, on any set if you're just, if you feel really comfortable with the, with the crew and the cast mm. and if you've got good relationships with them all then you've got trust on set and you sort of, mm. you feel more confident and empowered in doing your work. Yeah, great. So Sarah, what's your favourite quote at the moment? Well, I, I live by uh, Will Smith's philosophy on life. You can find it on YouTube. It's like a nine-minute thing, and mm -hmm. I try to watch it every morning. Um, and he says in there, one brick at a time, which is basically... Oh. Have you heard that before? No. Okay. But I want to get a whole lot of bricks <laughs> and put it on my wall. Yeah, so basically he says, you know, I don't set out to build the biggest, baddest, greatest wall. I lay one brick as perfectly as a brick can be laid, and then one day I'll have the biggest, baddest, greatest wall. Today's viewer question comes from Aussie actor Eliza Charlie, and she asks, Hi Sarah, what do you do between booking jobs to keep working, developing your skills, and to stay proactive in your career? 
<laughs> I think, well, you know what? I think sometimes the time in between jobs is really exciting. Uh, sometimes mm. you kind of get stuck in a rut and think, oh, it's, this is a really depressing time. But I find it quite exciting because it gives you time to uh, hang out with your family and friends, which I feel like, with me anyway, I kind of neglect sometimes when I'm working. You kind of get tunnel vision. And I think you can also learn a lot from them to, like, about relationships and how you interact with people so you can use that in your craft. But also, I try to spend eight hours a day working on acting stuff um, just because I feel like other normal people have nine to five jobs mm. and we kind of get a bit, well, with me anyway, get a bit lost sometimes <laughs> yeah. and don't know what to do. So if you structure your day and have eight hours of acting work or whatever, mm. then I feel like you're set. And also, I'm a DJ. So that works really well for me in between jobs. Yeah, because, tell us about them. Yeah, so I, I DJ and I sing with my best friend, Kate, and um, we play all around well, Australia at the moment. Uh, we'd like to get gigs in America as well when we move over there. Um, and we've recorded a track with the Grammy Award winning Eve, which is wow. really exciting. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. So she's recorded with Gwen Stefani, Alicia Keys, and it's really exciting to have her on our track. Yeah. And it's really nice to have that too because it kind of breaks, breaks up the acting. And, and, and it's allows still... you to still do the dancing and the singing yeah. that you've always had a passion for. Yeah. And that I just think it's so important for actors out there to know that it's not just all about acting 24-7. Uh -huh. Like yeah. you've got to have a life and you've got to have other passions. Totally. Otherwise I feel like you go crazy and you kind of lose yourself and it's not a fun job anymore. So Sarah, my favourite ah, part of the show. I'm scared when you're doing that for. <laughs> What's your daily <laughs> habit? Um... Okay, uh, every morning when I wake up, mm -hmm. I've got this uh, you weird watch Will way. Smith. <laughs> yeah, before that. <laughs> Had a bit of a purr. Uh, such a weirdo. <laughs> um, I, I get out of bed in a weird way. Uh, so I have to lie on my stomach and then I do like, what's that called? A cobra. Yeah, cobra. <laughs> and then I pull back into the. I call that snail. <laughs> snail? Okay, maybe. Not. So cobra into snail and then I can get up. And if, I, if it's like early in the morning and I get up without doing that, I've got to go back into the bed and do it. It's weird. Oh, you're a weedy. <laughs> <laughs> what habit do you think that actors should get into every day to really work on their craft? Not that. <laughs> um, I don't know. A bit of cobra action. <laughs> Maybe it's magic. Um, an acting habit. I think a great one to... To do would be to do morning pages. Mm, the artist's way. Yeah. 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 Can you talk a little bit yeah, about that? Something I'm really trying to dedicate myself to at the moment. Mm. I haven't mastered it yet. It's I'm it's finding 20 it really minutes, hard. Right? Yeah, well it's as long as you as long as it takes for you to write three unconscious pages mm -hmm. of writing. As soon as you after you've done your cobra. I was thinking you, it was seven. I've been doing seven. Oh, maybe it is seven, maybe I'm doing it wrong. Oh well. <laughs> I thought it was three. Um anyway, my version, three. Yeah. You just write Any the good. three pages. Uh-huh. Whatever comes out and then you can start your day. And I just feel it's supposed to unlock more creativity and, mm. you know, eventually and I'd like to... And it brings up past memories as well that you can use as yeah. triggers for acting. And I feel like a lot of the time too when I wake up, um, dreams are still, you know, mm. lucid dreams are still really present. So it's a good time to note them down and you can use them later. Thank you so much for You're joining so welcome. us on the Actors Process. You're so welcome. Thanks for having me. It's been fun. And I just can't wait to see where your career is in oh, five, eight, ten years' time. Thank you. And, yeah, hopefully I can interview you again. Yes. Yeah. That'd be great. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. So what unique thing have you done for an audition or for a role? leave us your comments on this week's blog. And a huge thank you to our viewers out there and a big shout out to Showreels Australia and our amazing crew. Check out our website, theactorsprocess.tv and find out how you can have your work seen by becoming our viewer of the month. So much is possible with The Actors Process with your support. So please like us on Facebook, follow our tweets, and please share this episode with your friends. So remember your grapes at your next audition, and I'll see you next Sunday on The Actors Process.